Marquez Brownlee, and Baltimore riots are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is April 19th, 2024. It is the 110th day of the year. There are 256 days left in 2024. It is your 16th Friday in your 16th week and the 32nd day of spring. You got 63 days left until summer. Today is National Cat Lady Day. Yes, cat ladies. We all know them. We all love them. Everyone has a friend that has too many cats and they care too much about them. I've always found it fascinating that people love their cats so much. They have such passion for them. But if you know anything about cats, the cats don't care about you. You're just a meal ticket. National Cat Lady Day takes place on April 19th. But if you own a cat, you know there isn't just one day. Every day is a great day to celebrate your cats. I've always been a dog person. I think I had a cat when I was like six and I really didn't like it. We had a cat when my son was young. I don't know where we got that cat. My oldest, someone gave us a cat. Thing was a freaking menace. We eventually gave it to my sister-in-law's mom who kept it till the day that cat died. Interesting fact, my son's name is Thor. The cat's name was Loki. All right, let's see what else April 19th has given us. 1782, John Adams secures Dutch recognition of the United States as an independent government. The house which he had purchased in The Hague becomes the first American embassy. Now that's really interesting. You got to think of the early days of the United States. The British Empire saw what would become the United States, the colonies, as their own property. And the gall of us Americans, future Americans, to think that we could just break off and do our own thing was unfathomable to the crown. And it took a while for some of the other countries to come around and see us as an independent country. I mean, we'd had the revolution in 1776. This is six years later that the Dutch finally recognize us as an independent country. Now, if you look at the Spanish and the French, they saw us as another country right away because they hated the British. And anything that made the British look bad, they were all on board with. A lot of times the United States or future United States benefited from other countries' hatred of the British. I mean, we got Alaska because Russia wanted to put some distance between them and the British, who at the time were in Canada. That was part of the United Kingdom at the time. That was the Crimean War. So they figured if they could take this land that was touching Canada and sell it to someone, that would be enough distance between them and their foe. Got to remember back in the day, you didn't have bomber airplanes and things like that. If you wanted to attack Russia from Canada, you had to march troops across Alaska or take boats, which, you know, doing amphibious assault on another country is kind of hard. It's easier just to march your troops across a border. And if there's a country in between you and the other country, that march gets even more complicated. And obviously, Russia was another country that was all on board with the United States becoming independent. 1861, the American Civil War. Baltimore Riots of 1861. A pro-succession mob in Baltimore attacks United States Army troops marching through the city. The Baltimore Riots of 1861 was a pretty intense scuffle that broke out on April 19, 1861, and is often considered the first real bloodshed of the American Civil War. Now, this was no minor skirmish. Things got seriously heated in Baltimore, Maryland, when pro-Southern civilians clashed with Union troops passing through the city as the troops from the 16th Massachusetts Regiment made their way to the nation's capital, local Southern sympathizers were none too pleased and let their feelings be known, loudly and violently. They threw bricks, fired shots, and caused general mayhem, which led to the deaths of a few soldiers and several rioters. The riot wasn't just a one-off outburst of anger, but a sign of the deep division within the country at the time. Baltimore's strategic position made it a crucial point for Union movements. And the city's mixed loyalties created a powder keg of tension. After the riot, fearing further violence and the possibility of Maryland seceding, can't even speak today, Union forces took no chances. They moved quickly to secure the city and other key areas in the state to keep them safely under Union control. This even highlighted the volatile state of the nation and foreshadowed the brutal conflict that would unfold over the coming years. I've been in a few riots in my life uh, with the National Guard and with the Army. They are scarier than actual combat, in my opinion, if they get out of control. You've got 
hundreds of people possibly, maybe even thousands, with no real plan or strategy. It's just total chaos. And when it's just total chaos, trying to bring that chaos under control, it can be pretty scary. The emotions are high and the tension is thick. 1943, Albert Hoffman deliberately doses himself with LSD for the first time, three days after having discovered its effect on April 16th, an event commonly known and celebrated as Bicycle Day. This is not to be confused with World Bicycle Day, which is on June 3rd every year. But Bicycle Day got its name because Albert went on a trip. Now, he wasn't just some Joe Nobody. He was a Swiss chemist who died at the age of 102 in 2008. After his experience, he later described it as a voyage into madness. Oddly enough, his wife's name was Anita. Her last name was Hoffman. There was another Anita Hoffman who was married to Abby Hoffman, who I'm sure took the same voyages on quite a few occasions. Abby Hoffman and Anita Hoffman were hippies and activists. 1971, Charles Manson is sentenced to death. It was later commuted to life imprisonment for conspiracy in the Tate LaBianca murders. 2011, Fidel Castro resigns as the first secretary of the Communist Party of Cuba after holding the title since July of 1961. Premiered on April 19th, 2019, Retro Tech. This was a pretty cool series on YouTube done by Marcus Brownlee. Now, he's in a little bit of, I wouldn't call it deep water. There's some issues going on with him right now, and I'll tell you about it. But this series was all about old technology that we used to have, like from the 90s, 80s, and 70s, whatever. He didn't do that many episodes, but it was really, really a cool series. But Marcus Brownlee is one of the number one tech guys on YouTube. He reviews tech products. I mean, everything from electric cars to computer parts to games, anything to do with tech, he's like the go-to person to see if it's a good product or not. Well, this has led him into a little hot water lately, but it's undeserved. He did a review of a new wearable tech. It's this little thing you wear like a corsage on your shirt that is supposed to be filled with all these cool things that have to do with AI. And really, it doesn't do much. Instead of looking at your screen, you just hold your hand in front of this thing and it'll tell you what time it is. It'll do other things, but it's doing far less than your cell phone does. The only thing now is they wear it on your shirt and you look at it with your hand as the screen. So obviously you're not gonna be able to watch videos and a bunch of other things. Well, they want like 700 bucks for this thing. And then they want you to pay $24 a month for some kind of service they have. He gave it an honest review said it kind of sucks, and it does. In his review, he went over the things that it's supposed to do and what it really doesn't do, and kind of points out that there's no real reason for it, especially if you're paying 700 bucks for it and then paying a monthly fee. He even says, maybe in the future this is a great idea. Right now, it's not doing enough to make it worth someone shelling out that kind of money. He's very honest. People started looking at other products he reviewed, like there was this electric truck coming out, an electric car, SUV, whatever. And he said it really was that good. He drove it, said it wasn't that good. And the company's like inches away from bankruptcy right now. So everyone starts climbing on this poor guy about that one. The reality is the company was already on life support. And hundreds of other people had done reviews of this thing. But since he's the biggest tech reviewer, they're climbing all on him, saying he's ruining companies because he's given them bad reviews. Now, he does hold some weight on situations like this. But the reality is, he's pretty fair and honest. And he's brought up some things that companies have changed because he pointed them out as serious flaws. But yeah, it's just a thing. Whenever a YouTuber gets too big, there's always people looking for a reason to knock him down. That's just the internet. I'm not nearly as big as him, but there's people right now that think I work for the government. Yes, it's been brought up many times. But yeah, if you've never watched Marcus Brownlee, he's got a great channel. It's called MKBHD. And if you buy things like Apple Watches, you know, computers, anything like that, he's a good channel to look at before you buy anything. Born on April 19th, 1968, Ashley Judd. I did not know she was that old. Actress known for her roles in many successful films, including High Crimes, Divergent, and Insurgent. Her role in Double Jeopardy earned her a Blockbuster Entertainment Award for Favorite Actress. That was a pretty good movie, Double Jeopardy. She attended 13 schools before studying at the University of Kentucky. She starred alongside Tommy Lee Jones in that movie in 1999, Double Jeopardy. 
She is the daughter of the late Naomi Judd and half-sister to Winona Judd. She married Dario Fuschetti in 2001, and they divorced in 2013. She's a pretty good actress. She's been going a little heavy on the uh, plastic surgery over the last handful of years. Died on April 19, 2012, Levon Helm. Drummer and co-singer with the rock group The Band, he also released music as a solo artist. He learned to play the drums when he was a child and was influenced by jazz music. His first big gig was with the Hawks. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, there's this uh, singer named Nora Jones. I think she's amazing. And I was watching one of her performances one time, and there's old Levon Helm playing drums for her. She actually sings one of the band's uh, great songs called Bessie Smith. Great song. On April 17, 2012, Helm's wife Sandy and daughter Amy revealed that he had end-age throat cancer. They posted the following message on Helm's website. Dear friends, Levon Helm is in the final stage of his battle with cancer. Please send your prayers and love to him as he makes his way through this part of his journey. Thank you fans and music lovers who have made his life so filled with joy and celebration. He has loved nothing more than to play, to fill the room with music, lay down backbeats, and make people dance. He did it every time he took the stage. We appreciate all the love and support and concern. On April 18th, Robertson, who was the leader of the band, basically, on his Facebook page, stated that he had had a long visit with Helm at the Memorial Sloan Keating Cancer Center. That same day, other band member Garth Hudson left on his website, Too Sad for Words, and he left a link to Bob Dylan's Knocking on Heaven's Door. On April 19th, Helm died from complications of throat cancer at the age of 71. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.